Hi guys, I'm just going to jump straight into this one. So I was brought some pieces yesterday from a customer, um, which include some A pillar trims, B pillar trims, and headlining from a VW T6. And these pieces have been trimmed before. You can see I've got an A pillar here that was trimmed, or it is trimmed in this black fake suede. The customer's had the vehicle for a couple of years, and he started to notice that the the coverings were coming away in places, especially the headline, and it was dropping near where the sun visors are. So he investigated more and he realised that all the covers on the trim pieces were starting to come away. So he decided that they needed redoing. Now, these trim pieces were done by the company that did the vehicle conversion, and they haven't done a very good job. I say they haven't done a very good job. They've trimmed them really nicely, but they've missed out one vital stage, and the vital stage is the prep. Now, I've removed the covers from some of the trim pieces, so I've got the B pillar cover here um, from both sides. I've removed the covers on those, and also the lower part of the B trim. <clears throat> I've done the clean up on those two pieces and the other trim piece, and I'm gonna remove these here. Now I'll show you how bad they're put on or how easy they come off. So I can just peel these away quite easily. So I shouldn't be able to do that if they're, if they're done right. I should have a struggle to get them off in one piece but this is coming off quite easily, and I'll, I'll explain to you why they're coming off easily in a minute. There you go, that's one off. Now, when they've come to actually cover these, they've done no prep whatsoever on the, on the plastics. These are now absolutely like new. They've not used any solvents on them to degrease the surface. They haven't done any sanding to prep the surface. Um, certain plastics have got release agents on them from factory. And if that is still on when the glue is applied, then eventually the glue is not going to stick. It will do initially, but over time it'll just start to come away, which is what's happened with these. Now, I'm going to show you how to do the prep on these in a minute. But I'll explain about some other parts. So I have the headlining and what they've done with the headlining is they have, which this is what I suspected when the customer got hold of me and said he had an issue with, with parts of his vehicle coming away um, and one of them was the headlining. They've covered So as you can see, this is coming off super easy. They covered straight onto the old headlining fabric. So this is the, the original fabric on the headliner that they've they've not bothered to remove. They've just gone, oh, let's slap this on top of on top of the fabric and we're going to sell it, it doesn't matter. We can just get rid of it, it'll look fine for a while, and then we don't have to worry about it later. Which is, it's a little bit of a dodgy way of doing things. Um, so if you are buying a vehicle that has a bit of a retrim inside, um, make sure you're buying it from someone who's done the job correctly, because you're into an extra expense in a few years time when everything just starts to fall apart. So I'm just going to put this to one side for a minute and talk about the, the plastic parts. Now, most plastic trim pieces will have, will have on the back uh, a stamp of some description explaining what it's made from. Now this one says it is PE and P PP. So PP is polypropylene and PE is polyethylene. So these are made from polypropylene and polyethylene. So when you actually think about doing any gluing on, on any plastics, you need to find out what the plastic is. Sometimes it is polypropylene, polyethylene. Sometimes it is um, PVC. Now, if you've got 
PVC on the back, then you're into another issue altogether. But I'm not going to go into that. I have a video which I'll put in the description about um, PVC or vinyl as it's called. And there's a different process altogether with that. You need a different glue completely. So when you go and buy a glue for gluing these kind of things, you need to make sure that the glue states that it will stick polypropylene or polyethylene or rigid plastic. A decent glue will tell you on the back exactly what it's made for, what it will stick and potentially sometimes what it won't stick. So obviously I've done these here. I've just removed the glue. I've not done any prep yet. I've just removed the covers and removed the, the old glue. So I've got this piece here. This is probably a better piece. You can see here where the glue hasn't stuck very well. The, it's, it's come away. You can see the dirty glue where the fabric, um, the colour of the fabric has gone into the glue. So you need to make sure that the fabrics that you use are suitable for the glue that you're using or vice versa. And if you have a, a trim piece that has been glued, the cover's starting to come away, then <coughs> This glue will be, chances are, easy to remove. Um, all I'm going to use to do that is white spirits. Now, white spirits is called mineral spirits in some other countries. I think America, they call it mineral spirits. Uh, we call it white spirits. And I'm just going to put quite a lot onto a sponge. Soak <coughs> this in white spirits. It's coming away already. Now I know this was quite a cheap glue, it wasn't a high temperature glue, I can just tell by, but it's, they've used a hell of a lot of glue, a lot more than you should have to use. And that's potentially because they haven't done any prep on this, on this trim piece. all the glue on the back as well. Now glue won't stick to all glue, it's pointless even trying. If you think you can just stick straight over the glue, don't have to go through this stage of removing it, then you're wrong. You have to remove the old glue, which you I mean, it doesn't take that long. It'll probably take me five minutes to remove all this glue on this piece. So that piece looks almost brand new now. So now that I've removed all the old glue from these trim pieces, I can get onto the prep. So the prep's pretty simple. It's just like you would do if you were painting something. Sand down, try and get in all the all these areas, these little recesses, um, and then give it a wipe down with acetone. So I'll start on that now. <laughs> You don't have to be absolutely perfect with, with this. It's not like you're painting. You just gotta give it a good a good scuff up inside as well. Give it a fiddly behind these fixings here. <sighs> so I've just got to do the same with the rest of the pieces and they'll be ready to be trimmed. <laughs> So I've done the sanding down on this piece. What I need to do next is I need to make something to cover this here so when I spray the glue on, I don't get glue inside the speaker. So I'm just using a piece of mylar. So I'm just gonna draw out the shape, cut it out, and then be able to place it in place. Hopefully it'll stay there without any issues.
So that should stay in there now. It's not gonna, it's not gonna fall out. I still need to wipe this down with acetone yet. So all the preps now been done on this uh, trim piece. This is an A pillar. It goes down the A pillar like this. The fabric I'm using matches the headlining. It's a foam backed um, fabric. It's a like a fake suede. Now it has very little stretch this way. It has some, but not a vast amount. And the same this way. So you'll find that most woven fabrics that don't have some kind of stretch um, yarn woven into it as little or no stretch down the cloth and then across the cloth. But from corner to corner diagonally, there is loads and loads of stretch. That goes for most fabrics. If you was using leather or vinyl or something that has stretch, then this bit doesn't really matter. So if I was to cut out the piece like that and lay it straight up and down the fabric, I wouldn't have the stretch that I need. So what I need to do is to lay it this way across the fabric. So I'm using the diagonal stretch to get around this area here. So this distance here is longer than this distance here across the top of it. So I need to have stretch at this point here where the curve is. So by laying it diagonally like that, that's how it actually is in the vehicle. So this piece runs diagonally anyway, so it runs from the top of the headlining down to the bottom of the dash at a once a 45 degree angle, but it's not far off. So having this run this way is perfect anyway for the direction of the fabric. Um, because it is a, a fake suede, it has a definite nap to it. So you have to get that right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it onto the fabric and then just check, make sure I've got enough, plenty there. I'm going to measure what I need as far as excess. So I need three inches. So I'm going to probably need three and a half. And do three and a half. This is probably going to be a lot more than I actually need, but better to have more than not enough. But I can never add the fabric. I can always take it away. So that's that drawn out. So I'm now going to cut it out. And now I can start to remove the foam backing. Even before I start to apply any glue, I'm going to just make sure I've got it in the correct position and everything will fit. So the trickiest bit is going to be this internal curve. Sorry, this is just to protect the, um, the fabric so I don't get any glue on it. I don't need a massive piece like this, so we'll just trim off a little bit. Just going to start by gluing this high spot here, where the, where the radius of this, this curve is. I'm just going to glue a line along here. I don't want to glue the whole bottom. I just want to glue this bit in first. I'm just going to lightly place it over. I don't want to, I don't want to pull at all at this point. If I start to stretch here, I would lose more fabric here. I want as much as I can get there. Once I've, 
Once I've glued this bit here, I can worry about pulling that way afterwards. I'm just going to put light pressure just on that curve there and get that little bit glued in. So I'm now going to flip it over and now I can concentrate on gluing the internal part here. I'm just going to start my gluing that little bit there. So I want to pull the fabric towards this radius here. So when I glue it, I'm going to pull slightly that way. And just ease my way up. I'm not going to try and glue the whole lot in one go. I just want to put tension on everything as I'm doing it. And then concentrate on the internal part. Flip it over and then I can just put pressure on this bit here. So that's the trickiest bit done. I'll turn it around. So I want to make sure I can still get all of that bit there. So next I'm going to glue kind of a diagonal line from here to where this ridge is here and glue that as a separate piece and then I can work my way down as long as I can actually fold it all over. So imagine I've glued it like that, I can still get to this bit here because I've got this internal recess there, I need a little bit more fabric at that point. So I'm going to concentrate on that as a separate thing. And not forget to take this bit out. Last thing I want to do is leave that in. So that corner first, where my left hand is, and then I'm just going to slightly put pressure tension this way, making sure nothing sticks where I don't want it to. Just easing my way to that corner. Can now start gluing the rest. So I need to stretch it to this point here. You'll see in a minute. Stretch it into that corner a little bit. go and then I'll work in this recess first I'm 
so I can now start putting quite a bit of pressure on it. I don't want, didn't want to actually put lots of pressure on straight away because if I have to release it, if I put very little pressure on and just let the glue touch down, if you understand what I mean, then I would be able to release it if I had any issues. So we have a cover that goes over there, so that cover goes over there. So I'm just going to place it in just to see where I have to cut away. This is kind of just going to mark it for me. So I'll make sure the edges are glued here. So this edge here, all the way along, goes underneath the dash. So where this lip is, is underneath the dash. So it's only this part here, upwards, that is seen. All this goes against the um, against the windscreen and this bit here. So that is how it fits in the vehicle like that. So this bit way is the windscreen, this way is the the driver's door. So I've used a high heat glue for this because it's right near the windscreen. So as you can see, I've got loads of excess fabric. I'd rather have loads of excess than struggle to get it on. So now I need to glue all the edges over. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply glue to the edges and then trim away at the fabric. If you trim away at the fabric first and give yourself what you think you might need, then when you apply the glue, you've got a chance of the glue spraying underneath and getting on the good side. So the excess fabric kind of protects you or protects the, the cover that you've just put on against overspray of glue. This bit now is a relatively easy bit. I'm gonna start with this bottom edge first and then I'll work my way up this edge here and then to the top. So I need to put a cut in the diagonally. Now this bit's not going to be seen and neither's this bit here, this edge. So my diagonal cut put in, trim that bit off, another diagonal cut that way, and we'll trim the excess off there, trim some excess. You can always trim a bit more later, I don't want to trim off too much. And then I can trim this piece here. Put a couple of relief cuts just there. And then I'll start from the, this bit here in the centre. Put a little bit of tension on, and then run my finger along the lip. I will trim off there. Working in this corner first there, then over. Relief cut there, get rid of all that there. And a quick flip over, just check it. Make sure it all looks nice. Good though. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to walk up this edge now. Do the same thing. Diagonal cut there. So I'll put a little bit of glue along this edge here. And then trim off the excess here. Doing diagonal cut there. 
and then just work my way around. So there's lots of little um, strengthening parts here. So I'm just trying to get all these in. So we've got a bigger surface area of gluing. Trim a bit more off that corner there. Trim now the trim off the excess. Check the piece. So I'll trim this off at the very end. <clears throat> I'll probably do, um, when I've done the other side, I'll do both of them at the same time. So this last piece to do here. So I need to be very careful now not to get any glue onto the good side. So I always spray some glue in the bin because when you spray glue, you always get glue on the nozzle. And that glue, if you just, spray straight away uh, the glue will probably come out in a very strange glue pattern and it could go anywhere so I always try and remove the bit of the glue from the end of the nozzle and then just spray a little bit into the bin make sure the glue the spray pattern is good and then I can start spraying onto the piece the excess and with things like this I'll do this bit first where this internal curve is that's where the most stress is on this piece so that's where I'll do it first and then whip my way up to the top where there's less stress And there we go, that's all glued on. So that's the first piece done. And I need to do the opposite side so this is the passenger side. I've also got the two B-pillar trims to do. Now there are two piece trims, so there's a, there's a bottom piece and then there's a top piece. They're slightly bigger than these and the bottom piece is pretty straightforward apart from one little area. Uh, but the top piece is a little bit more complex than this. It has, um, it's where the seat belt actually goes in. So there's a little bit of a cutout for the seat belt area. Um, which makes it a little bit more tricky and it's got more of a, a shaped top to it so that becomes a bit tricky as well but I'll get on with this one and then when I finish this I'll put these to one side and then I'll get on and do the bottom half of the B pillar trim first and then I'll move on to the top piece. So this is the bottom half of the B pillar cover now there is a bit of an issue with this one which is this recess here this is for the seat belt well the cover that was put on originally on this um they'd done it in in three pieces so they'd done the the main face they'd done a little strip around the edge here and then they put a piece in here so it was it was quite messy um, the owner really didn't like that at all so he said could i make that as a stitched in piece so i said yeah Obviously makes life a little bit harder, 
So I need to make a pattern now of the face of this and then this recess here. So well, the first job is to mark the edge up with a black marker so I can see it. Put some match marks on, so I'll match mark all the corners. I'm going to work out where I want to put the seam. So the seam, I want to have the seat belt covering the seam. So the seat belt will run this way. So I'll put the seam here where this match mark is in the corner. And I'll put additional match marks in the center of each one. So now I need to take a pattern, make a pattern for, for this here. So it's quite a complex little shape, this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use glue to actually glue the pattern in. I'll remove this glue later, but this will just allow me to get the pattern in plastic in. on the seam. You probably can't see this very well, but we'll see if I can make it easier for you to see. Put on the match marks. So that is the pattern. And now I need to make a pattern of the face. I'll just extend um, the pattern with, with measurements. I won't actually pattern around the corners here. I'll just pattern this face here and then I'll take measurements of how much I need to add to the pattern itself to give me this face here and the same this face here. Put an S here, so that is where my seam's gonna go. So that's the way up that goes, like that. So that's my top, but that is forward. So I need to put a directional arrow on the, the fabric, or for the fabric. This bit doesn't really matter because it's just kind of a circle and, and it's in here. It won't matter that much, but Irrelevant of which way you cut it, it'll be wrong in one place, but it'll be right in another. So I'm not really bothered about that. Now this part is going to be super tricky. So excuse me if I don't actually explain exactly what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get the first piece in place in the exact position that I need it to be in. I've only put a tiny bit of glue on just so I can manipulate it a little bit. Thank you. 
So this is just a case of working my way around this aperture here just to get it to be sat in the correct position. So that was a lot trickier than um, than it looked. Whoo! Right. So that's in there. I'm gonna push this out and then glue this bit here from the inside. But I need to now make sure all this fits correctly. So we should be relatively plain sailing from here. So I'm going to glue from here back just down this centre bit here just to get that in position. That's now where it should be. I have enough room to wrap around here on this side and then the same on this side here. So it's, it's worked out not too bad. So I'm just going to glue this from here up here. Now I need to glue these side pieces here. And the same on this side here. that's where I want that to be. It's a bit hard trying to get this into the correct position. I've got a little bit of a wrinkle here which I'm going to try and pull this way to get that out. I need to mark here and here but when I come to pull this this way, I know exactly where that will line up. So I'm going to be able to do this with it and get it into the correct position there, like that. And then be able to manipulate this that way. I'm just working this excess fabric towards the edge best I can. That was tight that getting that there. Just about enough. Whew. So that was a little bit tricky. So I've got a lot of fabric here which I'm going to have to manipulate this way and this way. 
just enough there. So this will just be the case of teasing it over, stretching it as much as I can while I do it, get it to that point there, and then hopefully we'll get rid of that that way. So I'm going to do this side first. This will just be a case now of just manipulating this fabric. Bit by bit. So this fabric has a lot of stretch in it and this job would be really easy but because it doesn't have much stretch at all then it becomes very tricky. Now you might see that I've got a little bit of glue on it. I'm going to let that glue dry completely and then I'll just pick it off. If I try and get it off now while it's still a little bit damp then I've got more chance of smearing the glue across. If you do get glue on anything don't touch it until the glue's gone hard because you've not sprayed directly on it's just a little bit of overspray from from dropping it form when it forms these droplets here then you know you can get rid of it because the droplets will just lift off it's not actually stuck to the surface properly yet because it had no pressure applied to it So now I've just got to do this side. I'll do this bit here because this is where the most tension is across the centre there. And I can just work to the edges. So that's probably the trickiest piece so far. Um, it's got quite a lot of shape to it and then the angles are quite severe here with a lot of shape in those as well. So it makes getting rid of any excess a little bit trickier. So things like that, it's just a case of slowly working your way around it and manipulating the fabric. So the face is now glued onto that. Um, all I need to do is to deal with this bit here. I will glue that from the inside and then I'll manipulate it down into position. I um, need to flip it over and turn the edges over, glue all that down, trim off what I need to trim off and that piece will be done. Now the piece that's on the other side is this piece. Um, this piece is going to be much easier. It doesn't have the big kick up here and no cutout for the seat belt on there. So it's just got this cutout here and this is for a switch. So that's just going to get cut away. And the only 
bit that might be tricky is this little bit here. Um, that's where the seat belt goes here on this one, but it will cover this bit here. So I'm not too worried about that. I should just about be able to manipulate the fabric enough to get it into that recess there. That one's pretty straightforward. So I'll glue all the edges over now on this one. Um, I won't film that because you've seen me do it on the other piece, the, the A pillar cover. Um, exactly the same thing. Glue, trim, stick down. So the next bit after this will be the top sections for these. So I'll show you the top section. So these are the two top sections. This one's for here. So it just goes like that. Um, there's a few little tricky bits here. Obviously we've got a big cutout here for where the seat belt goes, uh, split here, and then this bit here for where the belt comes through. But other than that, that should be relatively straightforward. This bit here might be a little bit tricky because uh, I've got quite a, a severe curve here and then I've got to stretch the fabric into the, but I can manipulate that up that way to do that. We're getting close to having these finished. So I will finish this one off and come back to you when I start these. So now I've just got this one to do. I've already done the opposite side here, off camera. So you can see that's quite a complex shape. It's got quite a deep curve here. And then on this side, you've got this part here that wraps around as well, which makes it tricky. And also we have the part here where the seatbelt goes, which it's quite tricky to get enough fabric in here to make it look neat and nice. Um, but I'll show you how I do that. It's quite a lot of manipulation of the fabric to get it here and then you've got to stretch it back out again once you've manipulated enough fabric in this part here. I'll get on with this one now. So again, I'm going to cut this fabric on an angle. So that is forwards. So I'm going to put it about the... Just got to make sure I have enough fabric here. I need this top half of the fabric here for the sun visors that I, I need to do yet. Uh, I've marked out where I need to cut for the sun visors. So I've got all this area here um, to use. So I'm not going to need it all, but I just draw around that quickly, just roughly. Yeah, give myself plenty. I have plenty left. That's well more than enough. So I'll cut that out now. Again, I'm going to remove the foam backing. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to put a line here at the bottom. And that's going to tell me where I um, need to put this back when I glue it. So I'm just going to glue this little bit here and the same here, just to get it into a, an anchored position. And then I'll whip my way up the card. Place it on the line, push down. I'm just going to glue that little bit there. That's all I need to do for now, just to get it into the correct place. I'm going to work up the card just to this part here where the, where the seat belt comes out of this aperture. So I've just glued up to here. So I'm just going to this over oops don't want to pull it too tight I just want to gently lay it on so I want to create this kind of effect here now. I'm going to pull the fabric into this, these two corners here. But the trouble with that is it creates excess fabric here and here. So I've just got to do it gently 
and do it bit by bit. Just pulling the fabric in and giving myself enough fabric there. Same again here, pulling the fabric in. So I'm just gonna do a little bit at a time. So I'll do this bit here to probably halfway up here. I'll try and get the fabric to come around here and I need a little bit more fabric in this gap here to be able to force into the and have enough to tuck underneath. Again, just spray, oops, in the bin. I'm not bothered about spraying these bits here. I'm just bothered about spraying inside here. So I'm going to use one hand to hold this away and then I'm just going to ease the fabric in and ease the fabric in. So on my right hand I'm trying to keep the fabric taut this way and with my finger I'm trying to push it into that recess. Same on this side. So now I've created more fabric here. I need to work that in. So I've just got to release it a little bit. That's it. Just to try and give myself a bit more there. I'm going to work in this fabric now. So I've created enough fabric here to be able to work into here. So there we go, I've created that fabric there. So I now need to now work that fabric out a little bit more because there's a bit too much in there now. So if I continue taking the fabric in here, I'll end up with so much fabric around this area here, but I won't know how, to, or I, I won't be able to get rid of the excess. So now I've got to start working the excess out of the fabric. So this is just a case of pulling this way like that. So I've not put any, I've not let it sit onto the piece that I'm covering. I'm now going to try and work out a little bit of this excess. I'm just slowly pulling it that way, sort of way. crease in there that I need to get rid of. Now start to try and ease out as much of this fabric as I can. There we go. So I'm easing out that excess I've got.
So now I can work the rest of the fabric up this way. This bit here is a little bit tricky, but the other side is even worse. So I'm going to spray most of this up now on this face part. Do the same on the fabric. I don't want to pull this tight. I want to want it to actually sit in that recess rather than pulling it up and then pushing it down. I'm going to just hold it a little bit high and just ease it in. to work this fabric this way So I'm going to have to work some of these wrinkles here that way because this is where I need more of the fabric in this part here. So all this fabric here will need to be pulled that way. But I'll work on the other side first. So I will do this side here. This is the easier side to work on now. So this bit here is the trickiest bit, because this is where there's going to be more tension on the fabric. I'm going to ease that over there first. I'm working the fabric this way into the harder part. This now can just come straight over. Just put a bit of tension on that corner and over it goes. So Leaf cut here, got another one here, and I should be able to just, no, nope, another one here. So that should now get over. There we go, and over we go. Relief cut there and there. Just trim off that bit for now. Now that I know it's in the right place, I can put quite a lot of pressure on. So, this part here is going to be the hardest part. I'm going to clamp that down to the bench. So I've got some excess here that I need to get rid of. So I'm going to pull some this way and some that way.
And now this is where things get a bit trickier. I'll push the fabric that way. Give myself as much as I can. Oops. Slowly just working round. So I'm gonna to have to start putting relief cuts in now. So I'll have to put one here. little bit further in so I can now a bit further I'll put a relief cut here that'll just allow the fabric to be stretched that way a touch more See that it opens up so much there, relieves the tension on the fabric. Put another relief cut there. So that effectively is, is covered. Now you can see here that I've got a lot of fabric there that I need to deal with, which is good. So I'll put a cut in there. I can now cut, see what, before I cut that open, I will just spray some glue in here. Continue that cut upwards. So there's just a little bit too much fabric there. Oh, I need to just trim a bit off here. I'll continue that cut down a touch more, just a touch, then I need to cut along here into that corner, same this way, along here 
and into that corner. Now I can bring that up there. So that's that bit done. Now the seat belt is going to come through here, so all this will be hidden anyway. So now, just like the other ones, I need to sort out all the ends that are, need to be turned over. So that's all the pieces now covered. Um, I need to cut a few things away. So there's a switch that goes here on this one that I need to, to cut away. Um, there's little holes here that need to be cut away on this one and this one. They're just for locating um, a little tab here. I'll cut, I have to cut away where the tab goes so it locates in properly um, on the underside here. So I'll just cut that away so that will locate in. Um, and then there's the the two speakers here. So I've got one on either side. So the speaker grill goes over the top here. Um, that is the standard grey coloured speaker grill. So that will go there. But I'm not keeping them that colour. I'm gonna dye them with a with a product called Forever Black. So it's for dyeing. The original ones were the original ones were spray painted black, but the black paint has chipped away on the edges here. Um, so I'm not gonna spray paint them. So the Forever Black product is a dye. It's not a, it's not a paint, so it doesn't leave a it's, it's strange. It's, it seems to me like it's um, marker pen ink that's been, that's been thickened up. But it doesn't scratch off. So even if you do scratch it, it will still stay black underneath because it actually dyes the plastic. It's for uh, bumpers and dashboards and things like that that have faded over time with the sun. It's mainly for putting on black things, but it will dye light colours. Um, you just need lots and lots of coats, so I'll put a light coat on, I'll let it dry, I'll put another light coat on, let it dry, and just build it up till I get an even blackness. Um, it's, it gives you a more of a, a matte satin kind of sheen, whereas this is a high gloss and the owner of the vehicle said he really didn't like the high gloss black. And I think it'd be even worse with, with this, because this is a, a dark grey, it's, um, it's called Lunar Grey. Um, the original were black in this black stretchy it's, it's very stretchy like a rubberized um, fake suede now I'm not a lover of these rubberized products because you overstretch them and then they want to stretch back they want they want to pull against the glue whereas there's something like this that doesn't have any stretching or very little stretch um, or elasticated stretch like this 
once it's on, because you've not actually stretched the fabric, it's not going to want to fight back against the glue. Um, so it will stay on, whereas this was fighting against the glue and, and pulled away. Obviously the glue wasn't great. The prep was non-existent on the plastic parts originally. So it failed. So hopefully this shouldn't fail now because it's not been put on by a stretching something over. Um, it's been put on correctly and there's been a lot of prep gone into getting the the plastics glueable in the first place. So I will cut where I need to cut and then start dyeing these. <laughs> 